fight we're about to show you could be sensational and it could well be brief. Let's go to the tail of the tape now for 122 pound world champion Manny Pacquiao of the Philippines taking on Emmanuel Lucero originally from Mexico City has lived in the Bronx since 1990. They're both only 24. Pacquiao's already been a pro for eight years. He's got a two and a half inch height advantage. He's got a one and a half inch advantage in arm length measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They weighed in within a couple of pounds of the 122 pound limit tonight. Pacquiao has put on 15 pounds in the 27 hours since the weigh-in and Lucero has put on more than 12. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer Harold Letterman. The Manny Pacquiao Emmanuel Lucero fight is scheduled for 12 rounds using the unified rules of the Association of Boxing Commissions. There is no three knockdown rule. Only the referee can stop the fight. In case the cut is caused by an accidental headbutt, we go to the scorecards after four rounds have been completed and you cannot be saved by the bell on any round including the 12th and final round. Jim. All right, Harold, it's Manny Pacquiao's first appearance in the United States since June of 2002. There have been wild rumors about his activities and difficulties in the Philippines in the intervening 13 months. Here's a closer look with Larry Merchant at Manny Pacquiao. As the most popular athlete in the Philippines, he has been a target of political guerrillas who twice try to kidnap him. They are assumed to be associated with al-Qaeda. He has six bodyguards when he's in the Philippines, four for himself, two for his children when they are in school. His last fight, just a couple of months ago, he carried his opponent at the request of the television people so they could get more ads into the show. He let his guard down and got knocked down, and then he got up and won by a knockout. This is a tantalizing style matchup because both men are big punchers. Pacquiao is a headhunter. Lucero is a body punisher. Here's a closer look with Larry Merchant. As a boy in, in Mexico City, he says his mother was an original street fighter, a volatile temper, disagree with her, and she'd settle it with her fists. He, too, became a street fighter, but he did it for money. At the age of 10 and 11, he was getting paid $10 for street fights by a local promoter. And should he ever win the title, he would become a true cheese champion or give it at least a new meaning because he works in an Italian deli in the Bronx where he makes mozzarella. <laughs> Beyond capacity crowd in the Olympic, they're psyched and ready. Here's ring announcer Michael Buffer with the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Grand Olympic Auditorium here in downtown Los Angeles, California, where tonight, Main Events is proud to present an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment. Brought to you in association with Miller Lite the Mandalay Bay Resort Casino of Las Vegas and HBO Sports. These bouts are sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. First bout is presented in association with Murad Mohammed M&M Sports. The three judges at ringside scoring this contest will be Gwen Adair, James Bagshaw, and Max DeLuca. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Jose Cobian. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF Junior Featherweight Championship of the World. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing gold, blue, and gray, officially weighing 121 and one quarter pounds. His professional record, 21 victories, including 12 knockouts, and he has one bout even. He's now fighting out of the Bronx in New York, but he is originally from Ciudad de Mexico, damas y caballeros, here is the undefeated challenger, Emmanuel Lucero. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red, trimmed with black. He officially weighs 120 pounds. His professional record, 36 victories, including 27 knockouts with only two defeats and one draw. From General Santos City, Philippines, ladies and gentlemen, the defending IBF Junior Featherweight Champion of the World, Manny Pacquiao. Stop. 
Chairman, I already gave you first instructions of the dressing room. Do you have any questions? I said, lots of come back with the bell. Good luck. Manny Pacquiao is uh, one of the rare southpaws that's fun to watch. Although Lucera undoubtedly will have a, a different perspective on that. Yeah, Larry, I think uh, Manny Pacquiao is one of the best fighters in the world, pound for pound. What I've saw, we can do a little bit of everything. Lucero gets low and tries to get to the body. Swings wide, but with force. Pacquiao is a devastating over-the-top puncher who's best when he remembers to throw his jab, but often forgets and just engages toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Part of Pacquiao's job here, Emmanuel, is to remember to box, but he's basically been separated from trainer Freddie Roach for 13 months. How can Roach get him to do what he needs him to do with virtually no contact with the fighter? Well, the fact that he's worked with him before will help somewhat, but you, in addition to not being working with Freddie, which he should have, he's been getting in a lot of trouble and not training properly, according to the reports we've been getting from the Philippines. Which he denies, uh, we should uh, point out. There was yes. a report of one barroom brawl, and, and Pacquiao said, oh, no, no, just a couple of beer bottles that broke, <laughs> apparently without help. Well, if you read between the reports, which I'm quite sure we did, I believe there's some truth to some of that. Lucero, Lucero gets off a moment with Pacquiao pinned in the corner, and the crowd responds. Lucero, originally from Mexico City, will have the support of this largely Mexican-American audience in the Olympic. Very unusual to have a Mexican that comes from New York. But nevertheless, he is a Mexican, and the Mexican crowd has responded tremendously to him, even though Pacquiao trains here in Los Angeles. Pacquiao trying to generate a rhythm in round one. He's having a problem getting close to Lucero. is getting so low, but then he can't operate too effectively himself from that position without telegraphing. Now Pacquiao manages to land the straight left hand. Hasn't made his jab effective so far. It's going to be difficult to do that if Lucero continues to fight in this exaggerated crouch. Yeah, it's almost like a crowd where he's dropping it extremely low. And actually, according to the rules, you're not supposed to go below your opponent's waistline, which he's did on a few occasions. Now Pacquiao straightens him up with a left hand, and Pacquiao pins him against the ropes. Lucero trying to duck everything. He's ducking, but he can't operate too effective himself from down there. No, there's, it's impossible to mount a counter offense when, when that's your defensive strategy is to, to get that low. That's right, and I think Pacquiao's going to start to get his just, uh, break, distance break, on break. down. here in an odd and awkward first round. Yeah, and he's trying to time the bottom and weave and trying to shoot his left uppercut now as he sees him going down. Lucero increasingly defensive, hasn't thrown that many punches in the second half of the round. As we go to the corners, there will be interpreters in both corners. In Pacquiao's corner, where they will be speaking the Filipino native language of Tagalog, our interpreter is Ernie Kalua. Okay. You gotta move your head. Throw your hands on the bottom and the top. And a straight right hand to the head. Lucero may have fought in that style in the first round, simply uh, dealing with a case of nerves. He's never been in a fight against a major fighter. 
Copy box numbers in round one. Pacquiao landing 16 out of 64, including seven of 29 jabs. Lucero was only five of 41. If Manny can keep finding a way to throw nearly 30 jabs in the round, I'm not sure how Lucero is going to get at him effectively, Emmanuel. No, Lucero can't do too much effectively, and especially when it comes to throwing combinations. When you crouch that low, you can basically spring with one punch, and after that, you've lost your balance usually. Lucero was supremely confident in his discussions with us yesterday. May have underestimated the hand speed of Pacquiao, as some opponents do. Yeah, Pacquiao's got a lot of experience. Don't forget, he's a two-time world champion. And he's had a lot of experience. And he's gradually following the instructions of his tournament, Freddy Roach, which is basically to jab, take your time, relax, and trigger his man out. I don't think he's going to be able to hit him to the body that effective, though. Pacquiao taking advantage of a slow break at the end of that clinch to hit Lucero with a left hand over the top. Seems to have momentarily stunned Lucero. Now Pacquiao tries to continue the attack. As the fight goes on, Lucero's going to pull his head up more and more because he's going to find himself very much out of the fight when he's bobbing and weaving that low. Well, not to mention that it, it's going to be physically exhausting for him to try to stay down yes, in that will. crouch. Absolutely. <laughs> Here's a three-punch combination by Lucero, one of the first multiple punch combinations he's tried in the fight. Lucero's hands look slow in this round. Body shot by Pacquiao and a big left hand. Again with the body, Lucero just taking the punishment and trying to duck away. And it's very physically tiresome when you're bobbing and weaving that low also. Everything that's happening on top of your back and on your shoulders tires you out a lot more. Lucero won a lot of amateur fights with this style. Golden Gloves Championship, New York State Amateur Championships. He must have just overwhelmed people. When you have a guy fight punch swinging like that, the best thing, make him miss completely. That way he loses his balance. You don't block his punches. You just let him miss completely. Pacquiao lands the straight left hand again. Fight has been one-sided in terms of meaningful contact as virtually all of the real scoring blows have been landed by Manny Pacquiao. Pacquiao's trainer, Freddie Roach, argues that his 122-pound fighter struggling to make weight would be a threat to knock out 126-pound kingpins Eric Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera. Your take? I think he would definitely be a threat for both of those guys. Mark your calendars, meanwhile. August 16, Boxing After Dark returns with a featherweight unification bout between Derek Gaynor and Juan Manuel Marquez. August 21 on HBO Latino. Tune in for the next Oscar De La Hoya Presents Boxeo de Oro featuring Jose Navarro. September 13 on HBO Pay-Per-View. It's the highly anticipated rematch between Oscar De La Hoya, Oscar De La Hoya, and Shane Mosley. Mosley won the first meeting by split decision three years ago. HBO Boxing for 30 years, building legends, one round at a time. Okay, you don't like the body shot, you hear me? Legs up against the body, jack with the... Uh, you gotta be lively now. Notice that Freddie Roach is speaking English to Manny Pacquiao between rounds, and Pacquiao increasingly fluent in English, able to understand him, so we're not hearing from interpreter Ernie Kalua for the moment. Copy box numbers in two. Pacquiao, great round, 31 out of 66. Lucero, virtually non-existent, 4 out of 42. Pacquiao landing nearly 60% of his power shots through the first two rounds. And there's more accurate punching from Manny Pacquiao against a pretty tough target to find. Finally, Lucero gets in a counter left. Even if Lucero lands a punch, it may look impressive the way he swings. I don't think it's going to hurt Pacquiao because you can see it coming. Punches that you see coming don't hurt you. The punches that you don't see that hurt you. Now, you can tell when Pacquiao is supremely confident. He fights with a little smile on his face, and he's been grinning through most of the first two rounds here. Feeling as though he's in control yeah. against yeah. Emmanuel Lucero. And after that good punch, good punch good he punch. is totally in control, and the referee instantly stops the fight. He was out on his feet with a punch that landed right on the point of the jaw. Jose Cobian taking no chances whatsoever. No count. Immediate knockout on a
punch that didn't even send Lucero to the canvas, but you saw the, the leaving response. The legs, yeah. I, I would have probably liked to have saw it went longer than that, but I think eventually it would have been knocked out anyway. Well, I, I don't think yeah. there's any question. Yeah, Larry. Well, Lucero had a great style if uh, people were throwing coins into the ring and he was trying to pick them up. <laughs> But it was not it was not a style on this level of prize fighting. No, I thought Pacquiao looked very good too. But uh, give uh, Pacquiao credit because he took his time. He saw what the story was immediately, went to the body, and inevitably there was going to be a shot to the chin. And Pacquiao, the Filipino star, very comfortable in L.A. You can see there's the left hand that starts to Lucero standing up. Yes, he never saw the punch coming. He was too low to even see it coming. He thought he was probably out of danger by getting that low. Gives you a pretty good idea as to how heavy are Manny Pacquiao's hands. Yes, and it's good focus and concentration too. And the referee stoppage was aimed at protecting Lucero from another shot because Lucero was a sitting duck target there for oh, Pacquiao. Yeah. Pacquiao was timing his movement, and in just a matter of time, he timed exactly where he figured he would move his head, and he moved right into position. So Manny Pacquiao stretches his record to 37 wins, two losses, one draw. How long will he remain in the 122-pound division? When will he move up and look for big money against much bigger names at 126? Well, whenever he does decide to move up, I would take him as a serious threat to all of the featherweights up there. All right, let's go to Michael Buffer for the official particulars on this TKO. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jose Comian has to call a halt to the bout. The official time, 48 seconds of round number three. The winner by TKO victory and still the IBF junior featherweight champion of the world, Manny Pacquiao. All right, let's take a look at some CompuBox numbers, which will demonstrate Manny Pacquiao's total dominance in this fight. Landing 56 punches to only 13 for Lucero. Throwing 48 more. Pretty good connect percentage of 38%. Remember to throw his jab as he was supposed to do. And we'll take a look at power punches. Pacquiao ultimately blowing Lucero out of there. Mostly with the straight left hand, landing 40 out of 89, 45%. And the knockout punch was a big straight left. Larry Merchant stands by with 122-pound king of the world, Manny Pacquiao. All right, thank you very much, Jim. Congratulations, Manny. When you saw him come out with that style in which he was bending at his waist almost down to the canvas, what was your first thought? Nung makita mong mababa ang, ang kanyang strategy, anong ginawa mo pag-iisip? Just um, relax and uh, take, be careful to, to his uh, overhand. So he was saying you would be, to be careful of his overhand. Did, did he look like an amateur to you and you felt that it was just a very short time until you were able to connect? Mukhang bagito pa at kayang kayang kaya mo? Um, I saw in the... Uh, I, I, in the tape, his fight before, uh, says, uh, I, I say, I said, uh, I know I can beat him, uh, knockout. Before. All right, so you've scored a knockout. Where does uh, Manny Pacquiao go now? Do you want to fight somebody like uh, Pauli Ayala or some other top 122 pounder, or do you want to go right? to the featherweight limit at 226. Uh, first of all, I, I want to fight the uh, Barrera, especially Barrera and Poli uh, Poliala. And uh, anytime I'm ready, and uh, anybody in featherweight division. Thank you very much. Again, congratulations, Manny. You heard Jim, his preferences for Paulie Ayala, but he'll fight anybody in the featherweight divisions, and anybody he fights is in for a fight. That's the one we want, Barrera. All right. Well, you know, Pauli Ayala, 122-pound fighter, also a southpaw, shorter than Pacquiao. I, I'm not sure that that is 
as exciting or interesting a fight as if he goes up to 126 and looks for Morales or Barrera. That would be tremendously exciting, Emmanuel. It would be a good fight. And also, in the dressing room prior to the fight, I was with Freddie Roach. And Freddie said, I'm going to give him a chance to test the waters at a heavier weight with a guy who's not a big puncher because they consider Ayala a big puncher. Plus, Paul has been inactive. But regardless of what, I think that Manny is going to be a threat for anybody in the featherweight division. He's a good balanced out fighter with a lot of experience also. Southpaw punchers, rare in boxing. You developed one, Michael Moore, who ultimately went on to become the heavyweight champion of the world. Why are southpaw punchers so rare? And where does an anomaly like Pacquiao come from? Well, most southpaw fighters used years back, going back to the guys of Chuck David, it was always busy by the guys. They usually tried to out a punch a guy. They never concentrated on punching power. Marvin Hagler, who fought as a southpaw, was really right-handed. And in recent years, we've had quite a few fighters who are coming along who are punching very much. It used to be the right jab they were just used trying to outscore points. But in recent times, we had a lot of good power punchers. One of my favorite uh, power punchers I had with, in addition to Michael Moore, was Jesse Benavides, who, by the way, was really right-handed. That's why he knocked out like Michael Moore, who was a southpaw. But both of those guys were really right-handed. So I trained them to move guys to their right, where they can catch with right hooks and right uppercuts. Manny Pacquiao, the billiard shooting sensation of the Philippines, scores another typical devastating knockout his future looks exciting still to come here on eight